Hello everyone, welcome to the final video on externalities uh, before the practice quiz video. Uh, this video will be mainly uh, summarizing some of the different, you know, public policy reactions that could come about in markets with externalities. So like we've already talked about in previous videos, um, markets with externalities have an equilibrium that is not socially desirable. Um, to summarize what we've already talked about, in markets that have negative externalities, the market quantity that comes about in these markets is much larger than what is socially desirable. So in markets that have negative externalities, more people are pursuing the activity in this market than what they should be if we want to consider the you know, well-being of society as a whole. Um, for example, if people you know, do not social distance uh, during a pandemic, this leads to a number of people that decide not to social distance larger than what you know, should be um, the equilibrium outcome if we want to consider the well-being of everyone um, in a certain society. So negative externalities have market quantities that are larger than what is socially desirable. Positive externalities, on the other hand, have market quantities that are smaller than what is socially desirable. So in other words, not enough people are pursuing the activity whenever we're talking about activities that involve positive externalities. Um, so in both of these cases, uh, whether it be negative externalities or positive externalities, the private market outcome in both of these situations is not socially desirable. So because of this, it can be argued that the government has a role uh, to step in to kind of correct these you know, private market outcomes to make them seem more like the socially desirable outcome. And we've already you know, briefly hinted at what these different public policies are, but I wanted to formally kind of say them for you guys, just so you know. So um, to remedy, you know, this problem of externalities, um, basically the government could force individuals to internalize their externality. So in other words, the government could make people you know, realize that their actions may have negative externalities or make them realize that their actions have positive externalities. So how would the government go about this? Well, um, to make people or businesses realize that their actions um, could have these negative impacts on not just themselves, but everyone around them, the government could tax or kind of punish these certain actions that cause negative externalities. Um, kind of incentivizing the people or businesses that pursue these actions with negative externalities to not pursue them as much. So by doing so, the government would reduce the market outcome in the negative externality market, bringing it closer to what is actually socially desirable. In markets that have positive externalities, on the other hand, not enough people are pursuing this activity uh, to make it socially optimal for everyone. So something that the government could do is actually subsidize or, you know, praise these type of actions in markets that involve positive externalities. Um, so, for example, um, 
getting vaccinated has a positive externality. Not only do you benefit from getting vaccinated, but everyone around you also benefits from you getting vaccinated. So something the government could do to kind of incentivize more people to get vaccinated would be to, you know, pay them a certain amount of money if they get the flu shot. Um, so again, the government could kind of force individuals to see the externalities of their actions, whether they be negative or positive, through taxes or subsidies. So to summarize that, the government could, you know, tax the bad stuff and subsidize the good stuff uh, to make these markets more socially desirable. And to kind of put a name on these policies of taxing and subsidizing, uh, we could call these command and control policies. So it's basically, you know, the government tries to regulate the behavior of individual people or individual businesses directly. So the government wants to directly change the behavior of individuals by using command and control policies. Now, um, there are some that argue that maybe the government trying to control the you know, individual actions of people and businesses, maybe that's not such a good idea. Um, and there are some market-based policies and situations that do come about in markets of externalities. So these market-based policies are kind of like incentives so that private decision makers will choose to solve the problem on their own. So instead of, you know, directly regulating someone's behavior, either by taxing them or subsidizing them, there could be different market-based policies that kind of encourage, you know, private businesses or private individuals to try to solve these externality problems on their own. And, you know, this may seem more desirable uh, in some situations. Um, one example that really dives into um, kind of market-based policy solutions for externalities is called the Coase theorem. Now, I don't have enough time to really go through and explain all of the details with the Coase the Coase theorem. Um, there are lots of really good videos on the Coase theorem on YouTube. So, if you're interested, I would definitely recommend checking those out. Um, but basically, um, the Coase theorem says that you know if certain you know property rights are able to be established, private businesses or private individuals could be able to theoretically enter into some kind of contract with one another to solve the problem of an externality. So, um, for example, um, going back to the negative externality example with the factory that is polluting a small town downstream from it, um, if, you know, we assume that the, you know, citizens have a certain right to clean air or clean water, then maybe the citizens and the factory might be able to enter into some kind of private contract where the factory pays the citizens a certain amount of money to compensate for the fact that the factory is going to be polluting the water or polluting the air. So the citizens get paid, kind of get paid off to accept the fact that they're going to be drinking polluted water or breathing polluted air, while the factory still, you know, maintains its private level of pollution. So theoretically, these different types of public or these different types of private contracts uh, could come about in these instances of externalities. 
Um, but again, there are a lot of nuances and different things that come about um, in the Coase theorem that I don't really have time to explain in just one video. Um, another thing that I think I could briefly mention as well is something along the lines of like moral codes. So um, if there is some kind of like moral standard or um, something in a society that kind of incentivizes people to like, do the right thing, then maybe the government doesn't need to step in and tax or subsidize people. Um, so for example, you know, if going back to the factory example, um, if it is just so horrible and so awful for factories to harm people so much, um, if there is some kind of like moral code in a society where there's a zero tolerance policy for pollution, that maybe this may incentivize factories to not pollute as much. So, you know, if everyone agrees to like publicly shame that factory for polluting or, you know, all, something along those lines, that could also be a solution to kind of move the, you know, externality market to one that is more socially optimal. Um, so again, in some cases, these private solutions that don't involve the government may seem more desirable, um, particularly if you have a jaded view of the government's ability to accurately decide, you know, what the tax should be or what the subsidy should be. Um, but I should also note that these different private solutions may not always work that well either. Um, and I guess, you know, one of the main things I guess I should mention on this slide is that there could be really high coordination problems. So all of these private solutions that I briefly talked about involved the, you know, person or company that is committing the externality and all of the people that are affected by the externality to be able to come together and enter into some kind of either formal contract or social contract um, to make this market more socially optimal. And there could be um, really high coordination problems uh, when certain parties try to enter into these agreements. Uh, what do I mean by this? Well, there could be a large number of interested parties that want to enter into these types of contracts. Um, you know, going back to the factory example, um, there's one factory, but there could be millions and millions of people that maybe live in a big city downstream. And all of these millions and millions of people maybe have different health care costs and different health problems. So they all need to be compensated or feel that they should be compensated differently um, for this factory's pollution. Um, so it would be really, really difficult for everyone's opinion to be heard when this contract is made. Um, and again, coordinating everyone could be really costly in that regard. And maybe it would be better for there just to be, you know, a blanket tax or blanket subsidy imposed by the government to at least try to move the externality market in the right direction in terms of being more socially optimal. So again, um, this is the final video on externalities before the practice quiz video.